and they've not gone mad, just the numbering is in a funny order because um, question one and three relate to each other and two and four relate to each other, so we really need to be on the same page. Um, this, All these functions in these set of questions actually are linear functions, so it means they're all going to be straight lines, but the same process applies as to quadratic functions or any other function when you're plotting it from a table. You have to use the x values to find out the y values, and then once you've got sets of coordinates, you can plot the points. So I'll explain what I mean. Oh, and often they often give you tester values to check that you're doing the right thing. And please use those to check, even if they've got them filled in, check that actually using 2 does give you the answer 7 and using minus 1 gives you the answer minus 2. It's a little help to check you're doing the right thing. Okay, uh, I tend to start with the positive values because they're easier. And then if there's a pattern, I can spot it. 3 times our x value of 3 is 9 plus 1 is 10. 3 times our x value of 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. And 0 times 3 is 0, plus 1 is 1. Now you can spot a pattern here. With linear functions it's good. If you're doing any other function, you've got to be careful that pattern isn't always... You have to do a number before you can spot the pattern. You can't just do 1 or 2. You have to do a range of about 3 or 4 values before you, you can spot what's happening. Okay, sometimes it's best just to carry on. 3 times minus 2 is minus 6, add 1, minus 5. That is following the pattern of take away 3 each time. We expect this one to be minus 8, so 3 times minus 3 is minus 9, plus 1, minus 8. It's good for a check. Now all I've got to do is plot these on my graph. So my x value on my axes here, x going along, y going up, 3, 10. Actually that's slightly off our axes, so I'll just plot point up here, or don't plot it at all. 2 to 7. Oh yeah, and I do apologize about the grid's a bit weird, but you'll get a better grid if you're doing this in the exam. 1 to 4. 0 to 1. 1. You can see, actually, now you can see whether you've made any mistakes, because if you get a kink in your line, then you know something's gone a bit mental. Minus 1, minus 2. Minus 2, minus 5. Uh, minus 3, minus 8. Goes like that. Okay. And then all you've got to do is join your points up with a nice straight line and draw it a little bit longer. Because actually, this graph, oh, you should label it as well. Y equals 3x plus 1. Um, because your graph does actually carry on. You've only looked at x values from minus 3 to 3, but we could have looked at x values of 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, minus 7, to go the other way. So actually the graph does carry on. Okay, important to do that. Let's move on. Um, this time they're in the reverse order, just because um, it's the easiest way to do. So let's complete the function first. Again, we've got some tester values, and then we're going to plot it in the axes. So y equals 2x minus 5, well, double 2 is 2, take away 5 is minus 3. Good, okay, so we've got the right method. 3 times 2 is 6, minus 5 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4, minus 5 is minus 1. It's going down in 2, so we think this one should be minus 5, minus 7, minus 9, minus 11. Let's check. 2 noughts, 0, take away 5, minus 5. 2 lots of minus 1 is minus 2, minus 5 is minus 7, and 2 lots of minus 3 is minus 6, minus 5 is minus 11. Okay? So filled in nice and easy, let's plot some axes. 3, 1, 2, minus 1, 0, oh, sorry, 1 minus 3, 1 minus 3, 0 minus 5, minus 1, minus 7, Again, you can spot if there's a kink in your graph, you know you've probably made a mistake. Minus 2, minus 9, and minus 3, minus 11. This is why they're called linear functions, or linear graphs, because they actually make a straight line. Let's plot these with a nice... And this points slightly out, that just because I think that's actually because my axes are slightly badly drawn. So actually this point is a little bit messed up. You'll just have to, um, your grid you get in the exam will be right. This 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 point is right. It's if it's way off and you have a big kink in your line, then it's, it's a mistake, okay? 
Okay, let's look at the last question. Very similar one, except we've now got half x plus 7. So let's check how it works. If x is 2, halve it, which is 1 plus 7 is 8. If x is minus 2, halve it is minus 1, plus 7 is 6. Yep, so I know the method. So halve it is 1.5, that makes uh, 8.5. Half of 1 is, is a half, or 0 0.5 makes 7.5. Half of nothing is nothing plus 7. It's going down in steps of a half, going from right to left. Minus 1, so that's going to be 6.5. And half of this is minus 1.5 is going to be plus the 7. 5.5. So let's plot this on axes, being careful because we don't have halves on our grid. We just have to work out what that is. 3 and 8.5 is just off our grid. 2 and 8. 1 and 7.5, being accurate as we possibly can. 0 and 7. It's quite a shallow graph. The gradient is only half this time. Minus 1, 6.5, minus 2, 6, and minus 3, 5.5. Let's try and join this up. Let's make it go a little bit longer the other way, too. Oh, I forgot to label this one. I forgot to do the last one as well, actually. Half x plus 7. Now, just an extra point on this. Um, let's have a look. All these graphs follow the format y equals mx plus c, where this number before the x is the gradient, and this number, this c, is what we call the y-intercept. Let's have a look. Our function was given. Our function was given a half x plus seven. That means it's got a gradient of half. It goes up every. Every one square along, it goes half square up, a long one, up a half, a long one, up a half. That's the gradient. And the y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis, 7. OK, let's go back and let's have a look at those uh, other questions. Just it's worthwhile doing that quickly now. Remember, it's y equals mx, the gradient times x, plus c, the y-intercept. This is our axis, y equals 2x minus 5. This time, the gradient is 2. And our function, the number next to x is 2. Every time we go along 1, we've got 2 squares. Along 1 square, up 2. Along 1, up 2. That's the gradient. And it crosses at minus 5. It crosses the y-axis at minus 5. I'll look at that. And one last one. This time it's got a gradient 3. So wherever I go across 1, I go up 3. Across 1, up 3. Across 1, up 3. That's the gradient of 3. And the y-intercept, it crosses the y-axis at 1. So really important is y equals mx plus c is a really important concept that didn't come up in these questions, but does come up. Very important. Okay. Uh, go back and pause it if you need to.